Okay, the Mishnah is built by the Yitzchak Meir, and Nachman ben Elchanan, and the Boar of Fega. Bat Shmuel. And the Boar of Shalema. Yosef ben Yosef ben Okay, so we are now. You want to pull out a dumb? We sure I'm at Gimel Shoys. Right, Yeshua sure says you have Krishna until the end of the third three hours. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. seven, eight, nine, ten lines in the bottom. Thank you. Amra Yehuda Mashmul Halacha Kav Yeshua that you have till the end of the third hour. Okay. Doctor Haley Gemara. Okay. The Mishnah said that if you miss Zman Kriyashma after the third hour, you didn't lose all the time because there is a mitzvah in reading the Kriyashma. It's as if you're reading the Torah. That's a mitzvah in itself. As long as you don't say the brach of Yotzer Ar together with the Kriyashra. Because if you do say Yotzer Ar with the Kriyashra, then you do, then you are mafsid. Then you are losing out. What are you losing out on? Made a brach of Okay? So therefore, that's not good. So, ask the Gemara, Meitve, Yakore, Mikam, Elech, Lo, Hivstid, Ki Adam, Shukore, Batora, so what is it? The writer says that if a person reads Kriyachma after this man, he doesn't lose out. He gets tzachar, like a person who's reading the Torah. But together with the Kriyachma, he should say Shtayim tu brachot lefanev, one afterwards. So you see clearly that even if you missed the man of Kriyachma, you should say the brachot. What are the two brachot before? Yotzer Or and Avar Abba. The bracha afterwards is Gal Yisrael. So to Yufta, the Rav Chista, to Yufta. So the Gemara says you're 100% right. The words of Rav Chista, that's in the name of Mar Ukla, that said you should not say Yotzer Or, have been disproven from this brighter, which says clearly that you do say the bracha, although you are reading Kriyat Shema past its time. Ikidam, the others say, Amr Abchizda, Amr Marukva, May lo hivstid, Shelo hivstid brachot. Others say that he said actually the opposite. The way that we just saw from the bright, that Abchizda is taught in the name of Marukva, that when it says he didn't lose, you know what it means he doesn't lose that? He doesn't lose the opportunity the, uh, the mitzvah of saying the brachot, although it's past the zman, and you're not going to get the schar of saying kriyat shem zman, right? You miss that. But at least you'll still have the opportunity to say the brachot. And now the bracha that we just brought as a problem for Rav Chizda now becomes a proof. Because in this version of Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda is saying the exact opposite. He's saying that you didn't lose out of the brachot, you could make the bracha. So now the Gemara brings the Breiter as a proof. Tanya na mihachi. We also learned the Breiter. Hakorei mekav elch lo hivsid ki adam shekorei b'tora. Avam mevarechu shtei mufanev achat chaleh. The Breiter says you do read Kriyat with the brachot. That's exactly what Rav Chista taught. Okay. Amar Rabbi Mani gadol kore. Someone who reads Kriyat Shema in its time is great than learning Torah with the Katani since it says Hakore. If someone says Kriyat Shema, he can be Eilech after the point of three hours. Lo Hivsid. 
He doesn't lose all of the star, but Adam uh, Akurebo Torah. It's like he's reading Torah. So, meaning, you're not getting the, the best, but you're getting the second best. You're getting Korebo Torah. Michlal, the Korebe Onata Adif. So it would seem that reading at its proper time is even better. Um, now this is a great chidush, uh, you know? Ready to read Kriyachan more than Osek Patara. What's the Pshar over here? We know that the greatest mitzvah is Talmud Tarak and Eid Kula. So what does it mean over here? I think because, you know, if you correct Kriyach Man not Bismana, it's like you're sick but So if you correct Bismana, it's going to be extra. It's even better. I know. That's the Gemara's right. right. I, I, I understand the proof. But what, what comes out is the result of this Gemara is that it's ready to say Kriyach Man to learn Torah. But we know there's a rule, the Mishnah, that Talmud Torah connects to Lam. I wouldn't say it's better, it's as good. Well, yes, it's better. So it could be that it means because it's always Torah. It's Torah plus a mitzvah. Right. If it meant that, then what's the chidush? And it's not saying anything. Obviously, this, is, this has two things, this only has one thing. It seems to be saying that even the mitzvah aspect of the creature is greater than Torah itself. It needs, it needs a beer. It needs a, it needs a, it needs a pshat. It needs an explanation. It's time bound. It's time bound. So it's greater if it's time bound. Aha. Uh-huh. So you mean it demands more of the person? I'm not sure if the Gemara is saying demands more. I think the Gemara is saying it's actually great. Okay. Fine. Says the Mishnah Dosha. Bechame Omrim. That cash. So this says that um, even tefillah, not only kriyachma, because the Gemara says that we stop learning Torah not only for kriyachma, for tefillah too. But there's, there's not, there is another Mishnah that says that basically that you know it's, it's, it's greater to, to do what you learn or to learn in order to do. Right? I don't remember the Mishnah, but. Yeah. To learn in order to amenas lasses. That's us. Right. So here he's, uh, you know, he's doing. He's doing it. It's like he's learning. It's like a sekba Torah. So he's reading the Torah and also it's a mitzvah. Yeah, but mitzvot don't come. But mitzvot, the mitzvot are not as great. It's great to learn amenas lasot. The type of learning is two types of learning. Maybe. But the actual mitzvot are not as great as the Torah. So what does it mean? What's the simple explanation here? It's created to learn to, to do this mitzvah in its proper time of the Torah. But he's, he's been osik in two things at the same time. Is that right though? So then what's the chidush? Obviously it's greater. It seems like even the, the, the part, a chilak shah mitzvah, the kriyat shma is the atzma is the yotagdot. So it's what's asking that we find even tefillah is greater. Not only Kriyat Shema, but here it sounds like it's about Kriyat Shema. That's what it says is the Maram of Furesha that says that even Tefillah you stop for Torah. So Tosfot's so, so answer is, yeah, the Gemara is not talking about what you stop, that you have to stop. Like for right now, you're learning Torah, so you stop for this amount of Torah. That's so, so what it says. The Gemara is dealing with Torah at a different time. For sure. You compare Torah later to the Kriyat Shema now. That... Kriyachma is only Kriyachma is greater. Tefillah is not greater. The Maris calls it Chaye Olam and Chaye Sha'a. Chaye Olam is eternal life. That's Torah. Chaye Sha'a is Tefillah. Okay. Fine. Vichame Omrim says the Mishnah Gusha. Ha'erev kol adam yatarika vavoka yamod. In the evening, every person should lean on his side. As the Torah says, when you lie down, 
And how do you do the mitzvah of Kriyat Shema? You lie down in the shop. In the morning, you wake up, you shouldn't just say Kriyat Shema lying down, or you have to stand up, or even sitting, or Kumecha, you have to rise. So the mitzvah of Abuka Yamot, Shinemar of the Shachmach of Kumecha, wait a little minute, Kal Adam Kore Kedar Kol, everybody just read the way that they are. They're lying, they're sitting, they're walking, standing. The Pasuk says in Kriyat Shema, you should say, you shall say these words. The way that you go on the way, which means not lying and not standing, walking, which means in any which way that you're in at the time, wherever you are, in whatever state you're in. In Cain, Lama Naimar of the Shachmach of Kumecha. So why does it say, the Shachmach of Kumecha? The Shachmach of Adam Shachmach of Shachmach of Adam. The Torah is teaching you at the time that people go to sleep, like we've been learning for the past 10 blocks, and the first Mishnah, and at the time that the people wake up. But it's not telling you what position physically, the Shachmach of Kumecha, the way that Shachmach does. Amar Rabbi Tarfon. Rabbi Tarfon said, Ani ayiti I was once traveling on the way at night. He takes the crow. And I leaned in order to read. I wanted to be machmir like Beit Shemayim. And I stopped traveling in the middle of the road and I lied, you know, I, I, I laid down. Now, which is dangerous. Because when you're walking, you have to be very vigilant of all sorts of dangers. In those days, it was dangerous. And you have to have your eyes, you know, be like people that, they train people how to walk. Even though you're walking this way, you know how to look back and forth. And that's the way it was in those days. You have to be very careful. So he wants to lie down now on the road. He's very, he becomes a very vulnerable target. People, so, but he did it anyways, because he wanted to be machmir like Beit Shammai. The Sikanti about me. And I endangered myself with their listed for the highway robbers. Amrullah, they told him, Had you been attacked or killed, you would have had your own blood on your own hands because you were over al Dibre There's absolutely no reason to endanger yourself. If the Halakha follows Beit as we know there was a Batkal that came out and said that. We followed Beit Hillel over Beit Shammai. And therefore, who are you to endanger yourself? Tell yourself danger to be machmir like Beit Shammai. Okay, that was the Tana on, Beit, on Rabbi Tafel. So now the Gemara goes back to the actual Akhla. Bishlam Beit Hillel, come and farshi tamayu, the time of the Beit Shammai. Beit Hillel explains their reasoning and the reasoning of Beit Shammai. Which meaning to say, their, their, their answer to Beit Shammai. They said, it says, which means in any position. And the reason why it says, as an answer, they said, it just means the time of Shechiva, the time of Kima. But, El Beit Shammai, my time, El Amri Ki Beit Hillel. Why wouldn't Beit Shammai stay like Beit Hillel? It's pretty obvious that Beit Hillel is reading the Psukim correctly. Ubeshachacha just means the Zman of Shechiva. Uv Kumecha just means the Zman of Kima. But obviously it doesn't mean. Why? Because it says Uv Lech Techavadech. It can't mean actually the Shach Becha and actually Uv Kumecha because it already says Uv Lech Techavadech. So obviously it's just the Zman. Meaning, what was Beit Shammai thinking? That's what the Gemara is asking. Amri Lech Beit Shammai, Kei Neim Rekra Baboker Uva Elf. Because had Beit Hill been right, the Torah should have said, in the morning and the night, why is the Torah saying very interesting language? So, therefore, you know what I think it means? says Beit Shammai. B'shat shchiba, shchiba mamash. B'shat kima, kima mamash. It's telling you, B'shat b'cha, at the time of going to sleep, says Beit Shammai, I agree with you. But the reason why it says it in that way, instead of saying evening, is to teach you that at night you should do it in the way of lying down, at the time that you stand up, in the morning, do it standing, actually. That's why it said it this way. So the Gemara says, Okay? What is Beit Shammai's answer? Beit Shammai's answer is, 
Beit Shammai going to do with Uvelech the Chabad Derech? Right? It's a very nice pshat that he said, it should have said the Boker of Eret, but he still has to deal with this language of Uvelech, that it should have said, excuse me, a Boker of Eret. And now it says that Vashat Machov Kimecha teaches you to actually lie down and stand up. He still has to deal with the extra words in the Pasuk of Uvelech the Chabad Derech. According to him, what are they, they're not teaching anything. So he says, no, I will be by you the time. It's there to teach you that the following teaching that the Brighton teaches us. It says in the Brighton, Vishiftcha Bevetecha teaches you Prat Veosek Mitzvah. A person, it's a very famous law, Halacha, Osek Mitzvah Patu Mitzvah. If you're busy with one Mitzvah, you're Patu from another Mitzvah. Where do we learn that from? From this pasuk. There are a few different Gemarot, but this bright is learning it from this pasuk. It says, you shall read Kriya Shema. It doesn't have to say any more than that. Read Kriya Shema. It tells you not, when you see it in your home, what's the point of saying that? It's redundant, it's right? superfluous. The answer is, no. If you're sitting in your home, and you're not busy with anything else, then there's a chiyuv to say Kriya Shema. But if you're busy with the mitzvah, you're doing something else, you patu. You're not just sitting at home. You're already involved in another mitzvah, you patur in the mitzvah. That's the first words. Okay. Ah, so the bride is going to teach you a teaching from these words. Prat v'chatam. This comes to exclude a chatan. Which means that even though the chatan is not involved right now in any mitzvah, he's not actually involved in the mitzvah of bi'ah with his wife. And he's, it's before the wedding, right? The night of the wedding. It's, 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 it's during the wedding, let's say. But it's not during the bi'ah itself. But since he's, his thoughts are on the mitzvah, so we add uvelech to when you're walking on the way. But you're not involved in any, in any which way in a mitzvah. Which means, not only means is excluding if you're actually involved in mitzvah. But we say it again, you're totally relaxed. You're not even involved in the thought of a mitzvah. But since the chatan is involved in the thought of worrying about the mitzvah, if, he's, if everything is going to be correct, um, to make sure that she... Uh, that he's thinking that she's not a, uh, that she's a ptula, nothing else. We can't have rule, therefore they said, that kones et ha-tula patur vet Therefore they said that a person is marrying a ptula, and he's thinking about this, he's patur from Kriyat Shema. We'll speak about this later, <coughs> more, in more detail. And Almana, we'll speak about also later, because right now the simple pshat is because an Almana, there's not so many thoughts, because she's not a betula. The biyah is not as complicated, and therefore, he doesn't have those thoughts, and therefore he's chayat. Okay, so now, the Gemara is showing what you do with Belech Tachavadarach. Beit Shammai says, what do you mean, what do I do with Belech Tachavadarach? Belech Tachavadarach was extra there to teach me that a chatan that's involved in the thoughts of a mitzvah is patu from Kriyat So the Gemara says, my mashma. How do you see it in the words of Alech Kavadech? Amar Papa, Kiderech. Just like going on the way. Ma derech reshut, of course reshut. Just like traveling on the way is a reshut. There's, not, there's no mitzvah involved. It's just what you chose to do. You're going on the way. So too, any person that's involved in reshut, something that's not obligatory, has to read Kriyat Shema. That, the Torah says, Uvalech al-Vaderech. When you're involved in something which is a reshut, not a mitzvah, then, Ve'ayu advar me'ila, she'enach yimitzah ha'vacher, Allah, me'dibartam, say these words. But however, but if you're involved in even the thought of a mitzvah, which is not a reshut, the thought of a mitzvah, you <coughs> patur. That's what I do with Uvalech al-Vaderech. So again, Beit Hillel says, Uvalech al-Vaderech, is there to tell me that, e- that even if I'm traveling on the way and I'm not lying down at night or I'm not sitting, 
walking, which is not lying or sitting. And so that teaches me that <coughs> positions in Kriya Shema have no place. And now, when I read the next words of Vishach Bechov Kumecha, I know that Vishach Bechov is just the Zman of Shriva. And of Kumecha is the Zman of it. But according to Beit Shema, that Vishach Bechov Kumecha is not just to tell you the Zman, the time, but rather it's there to teach you the position as well. So the Lech Bechavaderech is not, obviously not telling you that you could be walking around. Because according to Beit Shammai, Ubishach Bacha and Uvkumecha is very specific. And they're teaching you that the positions. So the Lech Nechadarech teaches you another halacha. The halacha is that if a person is a chatan, he's patur from Kriyachra because his thoughts are not like derech. It's only when you have a Lech Nechadarech that there's a chiyum of Kriyachra. But a person who's a chatan and thinking about the thought of a mitzvah, he's not bad derech, it's not thoughts of reshut. Rather, thoughts of mitzvah, and he's patur from preach. So you're supposed to learn an asay from it, but you're it's coming to teach us a light asay. For a chas not to do it. It's the parameters, the Torah is writing parameters of, of the mitzvah asay. It says, the mitzvah asay, in, in its broad, general sense, would have been, would, it would have sufficed had it said, v'dibar tabam, v'dibar tabam, say them. That's it. Done. Now it starts limiting it. So now we have to, so now it's not me that, that's limiting it. The Pasuk itself is doing that. Just each Mada Amr is learning something else from it. Okay? So, but this is the only mitzvah that makes the person destructive? Oh. So the Gemara is going to that. So the Gemara says, one second. Milo askinan de ka'azul edvar mitzvah ba'afilu hachi. Where do you see in the words of Lech Chavaderech that it's specifically when you're traveling Baderech, which means Rishut? Which means you're traveling for what purpose? For no purpose. You want to go to the park. Lech Chavaderech. Is that a mitzvah to go see the park? No, it's Rishut. Who told you? Maybe Lech Chavaderech means in any which way that you're traveling. Which means even if you're traveling to go do a mitzvah, you have to say Kriyashma. So we did this Brayta, and Beit Shammai is going to this Brayta, understand from Uvalech Nevaderech that it's, it, the teaching is specifically when you go on a, on a, on a trip, then you have to say Kriyashma. But if you're involved in any which way in a mitzvah, even the thoughts of a mitzvah, you're already patur. Maybe the Torah is saying just the opposite. In any which traveling that you do, even a mitzvah, you chayav to say kriyat So the Gemara says, in ken dichtav rechma v'shevet yulechet. What the Brayta meant was, you know how we know that that vaderech means derech shel reshut and not shel mitzvah? Because if it meant any type of derech, it would have said, Veshevet, when you're sitting down, Uvelechet, Baderech. Veshevet Bebeitecha, Uvelechet, Baderech. And when you go on the way. But what does it mean, Uvelechtecha? Veshevet Didach, Uvelechet Didach, Udebechet. Veshevetecha, and means you're sitting, you're going, which means you're for your own personal pleasure, not for Hashem, not a mitzvah, but should. I'd like to go there because I'd like to see it. Okay. Then you say Kriya Shema. Then stop and say Kriya Shema. You're in the middle of traveling to the park. You're going Uvelech Techa. It's your own personal going. Okay. Stop. Say Kriya Shema. The Dibarat Abam. You shall say it when when you're doing your own personal things. But had mitzvah. But if I'm traveling now, I'm not b'shevet b'shiftecha v'veitecha. I'm actually doing a mitzvah. Or v'lechtecha v'aderech. I'm even in the thought of a mitzvah, not of a v'lechtecha, but a different type of of v'lechet v'aderech, which means 
thought of a mitzvah, like a chatan, then I'll fulfill completion. So the Gemara says that is the, the underlying reason for this bright. I'm going to recap it in about a, a few seconds just to explain it. Ihachi says the Gemara, Apilu kones et Okay. Marrying an Almanah is also a mitzvah. Right? It's a mitzvah of period of religion. So why is, it, why is the bride to say it's only when you involve in marrying a mitzvah? So the Gemara says, no, high tarit the high low tarit. Which means it's not about that the Chatan is getting ready to go do a mitzvah. That he's, you know, tonight is the wedding, so he's on the way to a mitzvah. That's not the point. The point is that right now, the Chatan, that's, that, that's not enough that you're ready to go do a mitzvah. Either you have to be involved in the mitzvah itself, and that we learn from Beshiv Techad of Eitecha. That's only when you're sitting in your home alone doing your own things, that you are chayav and pure but if you're involved in a mitzvah, and the added lashon of uvelech chavaderech teaches you that, it's, that you have to also, in order to be chayav and pure you have to be, your mind, your mind has to be do uvelech chavaderech. Your mind has to be like a person who is going on his own Leisure tri- trip, you know, just his own personal trip, which means that his mind is not involved in anything for Hashem. It's every, everything he's doing is for himself. However, if his mind is involved in a mitzvah, he's thinking about how to do the mitzvah and how the mitzvah is going to be accomplished properly. Then the left of the teaches you even that we have to from future. Not only if you're actually involved in the mitzvah, but even if your thoughts are on the mitzvah. However. Almana doesn't have any of the two aspects. It doesn't have b'shifcha b'veitecha, which means you're not actually involved in the mitzvah right now. He's not involved in the bi'ah. It's just the night of the wedding. He's by the wedding now. Okay, very nice. So they're praying avid. Go pray with them. You have kriyat shema. Well, what's the answer to wait? But maybe he's thinking about the mitzvah. He's not. Because the, 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 it's not complicated, and therefore he doesn't think about the mitzvah. Therefore, he's not involved in the mitzvah. He's not thinking about the mitzvah. So he's chayav. That is why he's chayav. Ba'almana. Ba'almana, right. Good? So this talk about chatan is patum kriyat shema or avid? Yeah. Kriyat shema. Even kriyat shema, even though right, the kriyat shema, that's what it is. Chor is not from any mitzvah. No, but halacha. We'll get to the halacha later because we're going to see a shita of Rabbi Gamliel. It could be that it's only because Kabbalah Oma Machat Shemayim, because it's only Kriyat Shema, because there it's, it's hard to be, to be mechaven for, um, for Kabbalah Oma Machat Shemayim. Let's wait for the Gemara later. We'll see. But right now it seems like it's Osek bin Mitzvah, Patu bin Mitzvah. And Osek bin Mitzvah, involved in Mitzvah, exempts you from Mitzvah, means is includes even the thoughts of a Mitzvah. Okay? So the Gemara says, Yimi Shum Tirda, Says the Gemara, if it's because of thoughts, then even if your ship, is, right, this is capsized, so um, this person is totally consumed with the thoughts of his loss, all of his merchandise. So he should also be part of Kriyat Shema. Okay? Because Valech Techel Aderech is telling you, you have to be involved in your own personal things, but if you, but if you are busy, very busy, your mind is consumed with something, then you're patur. So the Gemara says, so then, why is that to be a mitzvah? So the Gemara says, and if you tell me you're right, you're 100% correct, that as long as your mind is consumed with anything, you're patur from Kriyat Shema, so Alama, so why, Amr Rabbi Abba Barazab the Marav, why did we why did we hear from Rabbi Ab Rabbi Abba Barazab the name of Rav, Avel Chayav the Khola Mitzvot, Amrot Batara, Khutzina Filim? The Navel is obligated in all the mitzvot, which are standard for that, Torah. Besides Tefillin. 
שהרי נאמר בהם פאר. Because the, the, the pasuk in Yechezkel describes the tefillin as peer, the glory. Shenemar peercha chavosh alecha. As the pasuk says that Hakadosh Baruch Hu told Yechezkel when his wife died, I don't want you to mourn her and to do all the things that mourners do. I want you to do everything the opposite. That was the special horaat sha'a. Specific uh, ruling for Yechezkel that Kadosh Baruch Hu told. And one of the things he told him was, "Pe'echa wear your glory upon your head." That's how, that's how Kadosh Baruch Hu called the name of Tefillin. So therefore, he's talking about you wear Tefillin, but a Navel should not be wearing Tefillin. What kind of Navel are we talking about? Oh, so what type of Navel? So we're talking about the first day of Avilut, because the first day of Avilut. A person is mitgolel mitzaro, he's totally consumed in his pain, and it's a bizayon to um, to wear filin when you are in so much pain. He also should be praying or bracha. There's a lot of things. Talking about the beginning before the burial or already after the burial? No, after. After the burial, you're not an onan anymore, so you have to pray. You have to do all the mitzvot. Right. But filin. So then tefillin too. So why would Hashem tell Yechez to wear tefillin? Of course you should wear tefillin. That's halacha or no? Yes, halacha today. The first day we don't wear tefillin. You didn't have that? No, they, they made me put it on right before Mecham. Uh, what was the burial? Where was it? Maybe the Svarad only put it on before Mecham. But what time was the burial? Any Daytime? Yeah. I don't know what. I also didn't today. It wasn't a gift in my case, but for different reasons. Okay. Anyways, that's not a So therefore, um, so what do we see over here? So it's not nice to put such a glorious thing that has the Shem of Hashem on a person who's in so much pain. So what do you see over here? That What is the Avel Paturin? One thing. Feel it. Meaning, every other mitzvah, it's exactly what the teaching is here, that, that every other mitzvah besides tefillin, the avel is chayat. Only tefillin is patur. But according to what you said, an avel should be patur from Kriyat Shema as well. Why? Because since his mind is consumed with the pain of mourning for his loved one, he should be patur from Kriyat Shema. If you're going to tell me, and when a person is consumed with any thought, like, like he lost his merchandise, or he's thinking about his loved one, he's mourning, with, you know, very strong mourning on the first day, he should be patu from Kriyat Shema as well. And it doesn't say that, right? Because Yechezkel was told, he wasn't told, oh, and say Kriyat Shema and wear Tfilin. Those are the two things that most people can't do. You'll do them. No, he was only told one thing. Wear Tfilin which insinuates that all the other mitzvot means tefillin, you're going to be different than everybody else. Tefillin you'll wear, they shouldn't wear. The rest of the world should not wear tefillin. But the, but the rest of the mitzvot, everybody's chayav. So the Gemara answers, Hatan tarit tirid the mitzvah, hacha tarit tirid reshut. Which means that the left of is not just teaching you that if you're involved in your own things, if you're very relaxed, you're going for your own way, everything's fine, then you have a Kriyat But if you're consumed with other thoughts, no. V'lech teaches as follows. If you are not involved in any thought of a mitzvah, and it's your own personal thoughts, then you have to say Kriyat Shema. Even if those thoughts are thoughts of you're con- totally consumed with the loss of a million dollars, the, 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 the loss of a loved one, and you're totally consumed with it, you're still chayav. It's only if you're involved in the thought <coughs> of mitzvah, like a chatan, he's patu from Kriyat So you're going to say, but how is he going to do the mitzvah if he's totally thinking about his merchandise that he lost? The answer is, stop thinking about it for a minute. 
be mekabel al nachot shemayim. So why can't a chassan do the same thing? First of all, maybe it's possible for him to do it. So why but is he not exempt? obligated? Yeah. The Torah says you're not obligated. You know why? Because you're already involved with me, says Hashem. I don't need you to stop and be, I'm just telling you the simple pshat. There might be other pshat. What the Torah is simply saying is you, I don't need you to be involved in the mitzvah, in the commandment of being the kabel all nachot shemayim now because you're already doing a mission for me. Imagine a slave is sent out, a servant, to do a mission for the king. So he's traveling now, he's doing it for the king, king, king. He's thinking, how am I going to get there? What's the best exit? The way to all these things. And every day at 5 o'clock, the law is that he has to pledge allegiance to the king. Everybody, wherever you are, in the whole kingdom, you have to stop and pledge allegiance to the king. This guy doesn't have to do it. Because he's already doing something for the king right now. But there's a lot of things that you could be doing for the king right now. Not a lot. What do you mean? There's other mitzvahs that you could be doing. Just studying Torah? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any other mitzvah. Well, Torah is, Torah is one visiting, exception. I'm visiting the sick. The yes. is right there. The shift of Beitecha teaches that. Right? If you're involved in visiting the sick, there are, para- there, are, you know, there are parameters to this law. If you're able to do both, if you're not able to do both. But you're 100% right. If a person's involved in a mitzvah, a pidyan shuin, a bigger chayim, and he has to do that right now, he is better from Kriyat Shemayim. But we're saying, even a great chidush, the second half of the Pasuk, the Lech HaMadera teaches you that not only well, is he, thoughts. if he's involved in the actual mitzvah, like your scenario, but even the thought of, of preparing himself for the mitzvah. So I'm thinking for Shabbos, I'm going to have guests, what to do, this and that, all of a sudden Shema comes. They're like, mm-hmm. I'm thinking about the heron right now. You know, like, really? Well, Erev Shabbat in the afternoon, there's no Kriyat Shema, but you mean, you mean, let's say, at night, you have guests. Thursday night, You're I'm thinking, thinking what about... thinking what to serve them for dessert. Yeah, I'm thinking about... And now, Tzay Tachachavim comes. The rabbi said, hey, you should say No, I'm preparing for Shabbos. Thursday, Wednesday. Okay. I'm that's in the middle of thoughts, not... of, oh. of guests, of Shabbos. So that thought itself is making me putter from saying Shema? Possibly. So but you can compare it to a chata, you know. Nobody's yeah. compared to chata. We're talking about thoughts, thoughts of mitzvah. Yeah. So it doesn't just mean a, a thought. It means that you're you, you're yeah, tarud, you're tarud. You're exerting a lot of effort to think about this mitzvah. The chata is extra nervous. <laughs> he never performed this mitzvah. And he doesn't know there are many many pitfalls in the mitzvah. Some rishonim says he's worried he's going to become a krut shavcha. Other rishonim say. That he's worried the Rambam learns. And let's say he performed the mitzvah already before. Good shayla, very good shayla. Now the truth is, you have a very good point, but we're going to see the Gemara later is going to deal with exactly if it's only chatan. Very good point. Let's 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 wait. Amen. Yeah, it's more like a, like a dayan, you know, it's been <coughs> done in any Right. Is that? Now the Gemara goes back. Ubeit Shammai. So the Gemara says, what do you learn from Uvalech Chavaderech? So the Gemara already learned what we learned from Uvalech. Right? But the Gemara wants to know why it says the word Baderech. Says the Gemara, which means that if someone is sent on a mission to do a mitzvah, and they're on the way to do the mitzvah, so they're not thinking about the mitzvah, they're not totally consumed like a chatan. They're not actually performing the mitzvah yet, they're just traveling to the mitzvah. So, baderech is another word that we have to understand. Already, when you do a mitzvah. But not if you're thinking about Iskei Shamay, like a chata. Vaderech means you're going on your own way, but if you're going on the way for Hashem, this is a third p'tur, you're also p'tur. Uvetil Amri. Okay, now we don't. We never heard that Beit Hill ever argued with these halachot. Beit Hill is in agreement that if you're doing a mitzvah or you're thinking about a mitzvah or you're 
Shluchei Mitzvah on the way, you're patur. But according to Beit Hillel, where does he get all these drashot from? If you, if you, what did Beit Hillel do with the Lulech Chavadarech? He was there to teach you that whichever position you're in, you're fine. So how can he extract from these words everything that Beit Shammai is extracting if he already used it for something? So the Gemara says, Memeila Shlamina, Dafil Badech Can you repeat the question again? The question is, according to Beit Hillel, he already used these words. These words are already, have already been used for, to teach you that you could do, you say Kriyachim in any position. Right? And that you shouldn't take B'Sha'ach B'chav Kamecha so literally. And you should read them as just as the times of Shriba. So if he's using the Lech of Aderech to indicate to us that there's no specific position to say Kriyachim, then he doesn't have, they're not available for him, seemingly, to be used to teach you that all these pturim, that a guy is involved in a mitzvah. So how would Beit Hillel know these halachot that Beit Shammai just learned from these words? So he says, um, Beit Hillel says like this, min meilo shma mina da'afilu ba'derech nami kani. It's automatic, which means like this. The drashah of lech ba'derech is precisely the way Beit Shammai understood it, like the brighter that we just brought. Teach you that Shluchim Mitzvah Apturim and a Chatan is Patur and Meshivt Chobe Betecha is that someone is Osek the Mitzvah Mamash is Patur. But, by the way, says Beit Hillel, you also can glean another halacha off these words. Because it <coughs> does say, Uvalech Chavadera, it does say that when you're traveling on the way, you say Kriyashma. So I do see that there is absolutely no position needed for Kriyashma. It's automatic that I learned this out from the Pasuk. The purpose of, the reason why it was mentioned, the main reason, the main teaching, was to teach you the halachot of when you're patur from Kriyachma. But by the way, the Torah also taught you another thing. It's, it, 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 that the, the position, you can't run away from the meaning, the simple meaning of the word. You can say Kriyachma when you are walking, which is not lying, it's not standing. So you got it, you got this as a, as a byproduct. Okay? And Urabana, Betilel Omri. Betilel says, and this bright is going to really explain the Shita of Betilel. Omdim the Korin. You could stand and read Kriyachma. Yoshri the Korin. You sit and read Kriyachma. Umatim the Korin. Lie on your side and read Kriyachma. Ochim baderech the Korin. You can walk and say Kriyachma. Ochim bimelachtan the Korin. You could be doing your work while you do Kriyachma. The Gemara is going to explain this later on exactly. So it sounds like you could just be on the computer and say Kriyachma. We'll see what that means. Says the Brighton, continues the Brighton. There's a story to Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah Shehel, Mr. Rabbi Makom Echad, that they were um, eating in a specific place. Rabbi Elazar ben Azai Zakuf. Rabbi Shmuel was leaning on his side. Rabbi Elazar ben Azai at that time was standing. Now they changed positions. Rabbi Elazar lied down. It was nighttime. Rabbi Shmuel stood up. So Amr Lord Rabbi Elazar ben Azai Rabbi Shmuel. So Rabbi Elazar ben Azai told Rabbi Shmuel, "Yishmael, achi em sholcha mashal madam." Let me paint a scenario, a mashal, of what just happened, of what that's similar to. Mashal lechad shomrim lo. Zgancha megudal. Someone tells us, someone, oh, a beautiful beard you have. What a nice beard. Flowing, beautiful beard. So Amr lehem, so he says, oh really? Yekinegin amashkitin. Let it go against the barber's, um, you know, scissors. Really? That's such a nice beard? Okay, fine, I'll bring it to the barber and we'll cut it off. Type of, what type of what type of response is that? They just give you a compliment. So you say, oh, I'll cut it off. Avkach ata kozman shani zakuf ata muter. As long as I'm standing, you're lying. Uchashav shani eteiti. And now that I started praising you, and I say, oh, you know what? You're right. Um, 
now it's the time of Kriyachva, I better do what you're doing. You're actually in the right position because it's Uvishach Bacha. You have to lie down. So I lie down like you. Oh, so you get complimented by that. So you stand up. He says, Ataz Kafta, now you stand up. Meaning he's asking, what are you doing? You were in the right. I was in the wrong. I went to be like you, and now you stand. Rishmael says, I did what Beitil else did. Beitil says, you don't lie down. You don't lie down. You don't have to lie down at night time. So therefore, I stood up. I wanted to be like Beitil. It's not that you don't lie. Oh, oh, we'll see in a minute. But very good. You're going to deal with it. I, I stood up to show that that's not a necessary thing. But you went like Ben Shammai, and you specifically lie down. The Lord, and not only, not only did you go like Ben Shammai, Okay? But maybe the Talmudim will see what you're doing, and they'll teach this law as a real law for all the generations, and that's a mistake. So the Gemara asked, my Lord, what's, what's he have to add this additional point to Rabbi Lozim and Azari. It was, it, was, it's, it was enough that he told him that, um, that I'm, you know why? You know why I stood up? Because I'm going like Beitila. So the Mechitei me Beitila nami itkuhu matin. Because you might, because meaning to say, you might think that Rabbi Shmuel was telling him as follows. That you might say that Beitila also holds a mati. Beitila also agrees that you can say Kriyachma while you're lying down. He just says you don't have to, but you could. And therefore, you might wonder why did I stand up? Meaning, I was fine. Beitila just holds you fine. It doesn't matter if you're upside down, walking, running, lying, sitting, at any time. So you might wonder, why did I stand up? So, So I'll answer you, the reason why I stood up was as follows. Because, when does Beit Hillel say that you're allowed to be in a lying position and say Kriyachma. If you had been lying down initially, originally, like I was. But you, Rabbi Lazar Azariah, you were standing. And then you went ahead and you lied down. Ooh. So that's a problem. He says, Avalacha hashta since you were standing, and now you, when the creature's time comes, you went to lie down. Amli, the people who see, will say, Shmami na ki beit They'll say, it must be, it must be, look, these two great Tanaim, one of them is lying down, and he stayed lying down. Meaning, had I stayed lying down, and you were standing, and you came to lie down, so people that would see this, oh, we have two man down, and they go like beit Shammai. Therefore, Shema Yiru Atamim Yikba Al Khal Durat. I didn't want them to make this halakha. So what I did is I stood up to show you that according to Beit Yilel, if a person is standing, he should not lie down. Why? Because then it looks like you're translating the Pasuk to mean you have to lie down. So if you're lying already, You've been lying, so you're not, sh you're not indicating anything by continuing to lie. You're not showing it. But if you've been standing, you should not lie down. And the same thing in the morning. Right? If you have been lying down, don't stand up. According to Beit Hillel. Because that will show that the words of Shem of Kamecha are pretty literal. If you've been standing in the morning, you're standing anyways. Okay, so you can stand. But if you're lying down, don't stand up. Uh, I don't understand why, why they're so worried about watching them lying down 
Like, were they all having a sleepover together or something? Like, the Talmudim them are going to see. Like, what do you mean? Lying down is really in your bed, no? Well, they used to lie down. They were eating over there. They were eating. They used to lie down. They had couches there to eat. That's where they ate in those days. Okay. People were around. They weren't there. It wasn't private. People were there. So you're saying when they were lying down to take a nap or something, all the Talmudim were there? It was like a public place? No, they didn't lie down. He lied down to, 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 say, to say Kriyat Shema. Just specifically yeah, say Kriyat Shema. Yes, the says, Kibbut Shigiyah is not the Kriyat Shema. When the Kriyat Shema time came, Rabbi Lezer Rezai went down. But why laying down? Because it was night time. Exactly. So he went to lie to say Kriyat Shema. Shach Bacha. Shach Bacha. That's what I'm saying. So I'm thinking Shach Bacha is like in your bed at the night time where people are sleeping. You don't have to be in your bed. According to Beit Shemai, you could be in this room. At night time, you just Lie down. Anyway. Or, or lying down while you're eating. So it was like after Marev or whatever, by Marev time. They were eating. Okay. They had a couch there. The Bishma was on it. The Lazar when I also went to a couch there. Okay. okay. So now the Gemara says, we have to move a little bit. Okay. Now the Gemara says, okay. Even if a person did like Beit Shemai, the Diyavad, he lied down or he stood up in the morning, like Beit Shema, he gets the mitzvah. Because even according to Beit Hillel, you get the mitzvah. Okay? He did read Beit Hillel, Asa. And if you didn't do like Beit Shema, you did like Beit Hillel, of course, then you're Yotzei the mitzvah because we are posek like Beit Hillel. But that is Rabbi Cheska. Brings this bright. Now, the Yosef Amar, Asa can be Beit Shema, lost that a lot. If a person was standing and he lies down at night, or he was lying down in the morning, and he specifically stands up to say Kriyat Shema, that is it. Why? Lo asa lo kum. Because he's, he's trying to indicate that the halach is like Beit Shemai. So the Chachamim gave him a knas, which means, midra bana. Midra raita, he gets the mitzvah. But the Chachamim take away his mitzvah. They say, guess what? You have to do it again. We're not happy with the way you did the mitzvah. We're giving you a knas because you're making it look like the halacha is like Beit Shemai. Now, if you were, I, I'm innocent. I was, it's the morning now, and I happen to be standing. My friend comes out and he says, you know, it's, it's not, the shir is over. It's already Netzach Hamas before. Say Kriyat Shema. So I say, okay, fine. So I say, say Krishna. Or they're praying, and I'm standing during prayer, the whole prayer. And they get to Krishna. Okay, fine. You're not showing that you're going like Beit night. But if you were lying down, and you specifically say, Shema Yisrael. So you're showing that the halacha has to be like the child. It's not true. You don't have to move. We learn from Uvalech the Chavad Derech, and it doesn't matter what position you're in. That's what we pass it. We pass like Beit Hillel. Why are you doing that? Nachamu said, you did that, you don't get a mitzvah. Okay? And that's brought down the halakha, Rabotai. Yeah. A person has to be careful not to do that. Change your, change your motion. Right. And let's say you go to an ar- Arvit, right, at night. And you walk in, and you say the two, first two brachot, for whatever reason, you're a little antsy, you say the first two brachot standing up. Okay? And then you say, you know, let me have a little more kavana for Kriyat Shema. You say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Ohev Amo, Ehoev Et Amo Yisrael, right? That's what I'm saying. Ohev Et Amo Yisrael. And you're standing. And you, sit, you shouldn't sit down then. You shouldn't sit down. You should not sit down. Wow, I made a mistake so many times. Yeah. Now, if you were st- sitting to the first two brachot already, so you're not indicating that you're sitting specifically for Kriyat Shema. I'm sitting down for Arvit. I'm about to stop right. Okay. Wait, let's say you're in your bed, you're laying down. You're like, I didn't say Shema. And then you lean forward to say Shema. Is that Asr also? You tell me in the morning? No, at night time. You're in bed. Mamash in bed. You're about to lay down. You're like, oh, I didn't say Shema. Are you supposed to lean forward to say Shema or stay in that position? Well, yeah, we'll learn about that later in Brachot because there is a problem saying Kriya Shema. Lying down, lying down. Lying down, lying down. And... It might be a problem saying Krishna even muta al tzido, even if you're like leaning down like like this, because it's gaivo. You have to sit up, so that it shouldn't be gava. It's a different issue, but that's not really this issue here, by the way. 
because you're still sti- you're still more in a sitting position. Of, it could be your even yotzer b'shat kind of. Um, but that's why I would have. That's where we're the going. Yeah, you could do that. You should do that actually. If you're lying down, you should sit up. The tinan we learned in the Mishnah. We have a proof to this. If someone had a very small sukkah and uh, most of his body fit in the sukkah, but his table's in the home, Beit Shammai says you can't eat in this way. Beit Hillel says you could. And they found, when they went to visit Rabbi Yochanan ben Achorami, he was in the sukkah, but his table was in the house. They didn't tell him anything. So, you see, what, what were they trying to say? That even the Ziknei Beit Shammai went to visit him. And they didn't say a word to Rabbi Yochanan ben Achorami. Obviously, they had no issue. So why are you, Beit Shammai, so adamant that you don't get the mitzvah like this? So they said to him, I'm a Misham Raya. From there, is there a proof? Afheim Amrulo, they actually did tell him. Im keina yita noheg, lo ki yamta mitzvah tzukam yamech. If you've been doing this, you have never fulfilled the mitzvah of tzukam. So according to Beit Shammai, if you do like Beit Hillel, okay, Um, you're not behind the mitzvah. So here too, according to Beit Hillel, if you try to do like Beit Shammai, you don't get the mitzvah. Which means, if you can't choose, according to Beit Hillel, to do specifically like Beit Shammai. You actually chayav mitzvah. You actually chayav mitzvah. The Gemara quotes our Mishnah, the story of Rabbi Tafon. And they told him, by the way, you know, you deserved to die. If anything would have happened to you, you would have been deserving of it. Because you were over on the words of the Chachamim. And we already had that at the first part, first part of the Brachot. If someone is over on the words of the Chachamim, he specifically tries something else. Then he really is chayav mita. Why is it so harsh to say Beisham is not a chacham? That's a b. Like, how could you be so involved in you saying, oh, whatever you do, opposite is wrong. You're chayav misa ad kedekach. Because once the halacha is established, then Beit Shammai, the Gemara says many times in Shas, Dibe Beisham Eitzel Dibe Beisil Loy Klum. The Gemara says are nothing. The words of Beit Shammai in the face of Beit Hillel, once the battle came out and we rule like Beit Hillel, the words of Beit Shammai have no significance. So when you try to be like Beit Shammai, that's what they tell Rabbi Tarfon, so you're now, you're disregarding the words of the Halakha. So what did Beit Shammai do after that? What? What did Beit Shammai do after that? Beit Shammai doesn't have to listen to that. So what do you mean Beit Shammai doesn't have to listen to that? Why not? Because if it was Paskin and Paskol came, he should obviously listen to it. If he doesn't listen, then he's Chayv Misa also. No, because Beit Shammai didn't understand the Torah the way Beit Hillel did. So they're not allowed, they're not allowed to follow Beit Hillel. You have to follow what you came out of the Torah. Both of them are true. Don't get me wrong. Eilu ve'eilu diri ve'lekim chayim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu understands Beit Shammai just as well as Beit Hillel. Maybe even better. They're both equally, but the question is halakha. Halakha means we're limited human beings. We're not Hashem. Hashem is able to go to the right and the left at the same time. He's able to lie down and to stand up at the same time. Okay. Right? He doesn't do any of these things. But, but we're limited. So if we lie, we can't sit. If we sit, we can't lie. If we stand, we can't lie. So what does the Torah want from us that are limited? Standing or sitting? The question is not what's true in the truth. And the truth, maybe both are true. There's different, there's shrimp panim the Torah, there's many ways of understanding Torah. Exactly. However, what do you do? Halakha means what do you, what do you actually do? Okay, fine. Halakha lema said, we have only one way, Beit Now, if you try to disregard the words of Beit 
That's, that, that means that you're now, now you're like your own man. One day, that person could turn more modern and more modern until he becomes conservative and reformed. Basically, the Chachamim said, you can't play with what the Chachamim told you. That's fine. Then why, why shouldn't Beit Shammai go according to Beit Shammai? Because Beit Shammai, there's another law in the Torah. The law is that if you don't understand the words, the way the other Posek understands them, and what you see in the Torah is only one way to the Halakha, then you have to follow what you understood. If you're a great person, if you know how to derive laws from the Torah, so Beit Shammai doesn't seem like Beit Hillel at all. They're not allowed to follow Beit Hillel. They have to follow. She's saying if I would be a Chacham and I would see only the way Beit Shammai, I can't go according to Beit Shammai. No, no. From what you're saying, if you I would can. see the words like Beit Shammai. Yeah. Then you. Yeah. So I would be able to then. Yes. 100%. Okay, great. If you were okay. in those days, but okay. if you came in the next generation of the Amoraim, there was already a battle that said <clears throat> you can't see things like Beit Shammai. That's it. Too small. I, I don't have time. It's, we don't have time anything right now, actually, so maybe we do have time. But the point is that the, I'll show you a Kesef Mishnah later on. Uh, once it gets to a certain point where they don't weigh in on who's right and wrong, I'm a right. It's facts. It's already been accepted that the so law is like Beit Hillel. I understand that. But so Beit Shammai is Beit Shammai. I understand. But Chayv Misa. What are you no. trying to do? You're trying to do a mitzvah already. Yeah, uh, you hold like this person. No, I tell you, you what, what I'm saying? Mita. I think in this case, Chav Mita, because it, you know, he's, he's a Chacham. Because you're showing and the wrong Halakha. Right, so he becomes as the Ken Mamre. And that's why he's Chav Mita. So you're also to have an opinion. You are also to have an opinion. Could you come out? Of course you're also to have an opinion. Could you come out with a third opinion here? Maybe. Really? No. Maybe. No, <laughs> She's been putting in the Torah, right? You can always figure something else out. Right. Why not? 